If you've ever suffered with cramps, you will know how painful they can be. Cramps are something that I see a lot with my patients. When I say cramps, I'm mainly talking about muscle spasms. Cramps and muscle spasms are something that's incredibly painful. And if you've ever had cramps or muscle spasms, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's something that happens a lot in many of my patients. And that can happen either during treatment or something that they suffer with at home on their own. So in today's video, we are gonna discuss muscle cramps, muscle spasms, and potentially a couple of things that you can do to help relieve some of your muscle spasms. Now, muscle spasms are very painful. I've had them and something I've had quite a lot myself. I remember a few times, one was when I was swimming competitively, diving off the blocks and my muscles in my calves going into spasm. Uh, I remember having to pick things up while working in a physical job and my hands spasming. So it's something that I'm very familiar with. A lot of my patients, particularly older patients, tend to have cramps or muscle spasms at nighttime. So nighttime is a very uh, common time for people to go into cramps and that tends to happen more in their legs. Now there's a lot of reasons for muscle cramps or muscle spasms. The, the science between why it happens is still a little bit mixed actually. Uh, there's various different theories out there. The, some of the, the more common theories are to do with more, your sort of neuromuscular control. So the, the balance between stimulation and inhibition. So you've got a stimulus coming into the muscles telling the muscles to contract. And then you've got something at the other end telling the muscles to stop contracting. And sometimes you can get this imbalance where the signals are coming in, but there's not enough signals telling the muscles to stop contracting. So that makes the muscles spasm. Another theory is the electrolyte theory. And there's a theory that, particularly with people who are dehydrated or have not been taking enough minerals into their body, have an imbalance between electrolytes like magnesium, calcium, potassium. And so one of the common things you have probably heard is to eat more bananas because they are high in potassium. Personally, that's not something I recommend. Uh, the advice also is maybe to eat more calcium rich foods. And again, not something I recommend myself. Cramps and muscle spasms tend to be quite frequent in people who are pregnant. And that could be due to a fluid imbalance. And a lot of pregnant people get other fluid related problems as well, like uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. So in pregnancy, the, the body has a tendency to store more fluid. It's also co more common in older people. And the theory with this is that as you get older, you tend to have less muscle mass. So the muscles that you do have are having to work harder. And so as the muscles are working harder and harder, then they're more likely to fatigue and then end up going into spasm. Athletes tend to get cramps or muscle spasms quite a lot. And again, this is coming down to probably muscle fatigue. There's two theories behind this. It could either be the muscle fatigue or it could be the electrolyte imbalance. So you see this a lot in uh, football players, rugby players, American football, soccer players, uh, who, whose games last for quite a long time and they're always on the go. So they're not being able to hydrate as often, they're fatiguing, so they're not having the electrolytes. So as the games progress, you start to see a lot more players going into cramps, mainly in their legs. But then also there's not worth ruling out certain medical conditions. Uh, not only medical conditions, but certain medications as well can cause cramps or spasms for various different reasons. One of the most common reasons is say dehydration. Um, things like diuretics can reduce the amount of fluid within the body, interrupt the electrolyte balance, and therefore lead to the possibility of cramps. And then we've also got blood supply issues. And a lot of people who are diabetics will have reduced blood supply. And so there's mainly because the blood is a little bit thicker in uh, diabetics. And also in diabetics, the neurological supply to blood vessels is compromised as well. So diabetics often have cramps. And diabetics often have cramps due to the poor blood supply to the extremities as well. Now, if you've had spasms, if you've had cramps, you know, well, you know how painful they are, right? But they can last for only a few seconds or they can last for minutes. And if you're one of the unlucky people who cramps or spasms don't release, 
then you know that the next day you're going to feel really sore. So with cramps, if you go into a cramp or a spasm, you have to stretch straight away. So if you find that you're going into cramps in the same muscle all the time, so let's say it's in your calves, learn how to stretch those muscles because as soon as you feel a cramp coming on, and you can feel it, as soon as you feel a cramp coming on, you have to stretch straight away. If you don't and you allow that cramp to come on or that spasm to come on, it can lock up and it sometimes can be very difficult for you to get out of that spasm. So the next day you might feel really sore. So if you do find that you are spasming quite frequently, once you've had the spasm, then it could be worth taking some pain relief medication. Now this is not a prescription, so make sure you speak to your doctor or your pharmacist. Here's the biggest tip that I can give people with frequent spasms. Now quite often with the patients I see, it's not a medical related condition. It's not a drug related condition. It tends to be mainly muscular. So I have found a lot of benefit giving magnesium glycinate to patients with frequent spasms. Now, a lot of the time people are told to take calcium, but actually, in my opinion, that's probably the worst thing that you can do because calcium is a contractant. Calcium helps to stimulate muscle contraction. So if you're then increasing the amount of calcium within your diet or as a supplement, then potentially you can, you can be leading or predisposing yourself to spasms. So if this is you, then I would actually suggest taking magnesium glycinate. Now magnesium glycinate is probably the best form that's absorbed within your body. There's other forms of magnesium, but in terms of cramps, this is the one that you want to try and get hold of. So magnesium helps to relax muscles. So if you are the sort of person who has a lot of cramps at night or spasms at night, particularly in your calves, or you find that you, know, you could be sitting there on the sofa and then you start to move and you go into a spasm, magnesium could potentially help you. And I would gradually build up your dosage of magnesium from about 200 milligrams per day to four to 600 milligrams per day. That tends to be quite a tolerable dose for most people. Now in my experience, giving people magnesium, people who are frequently spasming, is a very effective remedy, but you don't often hear about it in a lot of literature or from a lot of sources, but actually I find it works really well. Now I've got a patient of mine who I've been seeing for years, and there's various different conditions. Diabetes is one of them, being overweight is another. He was always going into spasms. And it's very interesting, the, this case, because even though we gave him magnesium, they would help. But as soon as he ran out of magnesium or stopped taking it or forgot to take it, very quickly he would start getting spasms again. And for some reason, we, we started to piece things together and quite often go on holiday every year. And there was, I remember asking him, when you go on holiday, do you tend to drink more bottled water or tap water? Um, because when he's on holiday, he never got cramps. And he told me bottled water. And I said, when you're here in London, do you drink more tap water or bottled water? And he said, tap water. Now here in London particularly, our water is very hard. So it contains a lot more calcium compared to anywhere else in the country. So I said to him, what if you tried just drinking bottled water for a while? So I explained to him that potentially the amount of calcium within the water in your tap water was quite high. Maybe that's leading to you having muscle cramps. So he came off tap water and almost within a few days, he was gone from having cramps daily to not having cramps at all. And this has continued. This is not just a fluke. He has continued not having cramps probably for around six months now. And this is just purely because the amount of calcium within the water was tipping him over the threshold, causing him to frequently go into spasms. So it's a really interesting case in my opinion. So if you are the type of person that may be having cramps on a very frequent regular basis, maybe consider how much calcium is in your water. Now, of course, this is not the only cause. So if you are having frequent cramps, then always get yourself checked out by a doctor. Get your blood works done. Make sure there's nothing else going on. There are, of course, other 
more serious causes of cramps. Uh, for example, tetanus. Maybe you could cut yourself outside and your blood can get infected with pathogens from the soil, which could lead to something like tetanus and that can lead to cramps. Now that's obviously not very frequent and I've never come across that here. I'm sure many doctors have because that's more of their specialty. But there are certain medical conditions that can cause cramping. So if you are experiencing cramps that are more frequent or, or longer duration than 10 minutes and they don't release, then maybe get yourself checked out or go to hospital. Another reason I can think of that, that can lead to this kind of thing is, let's say you've had some kind of um, food poisoning which caused a lot of uh, diarrhea and vomiting. So the, the frequent vomiting and diarrhea has caused you to be dehydrated, your electrolyte balance has depleted, and that can often lead to cramping as well. In which case that would be also in a medical emergency as well. So if you are suffering from cramps, I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, where do you suffer from cramps and what have you tried that has helped your cramps? So let other people know in the comments section below. I hope this video was helpful or at the very least interesting to you. Good luck with your cramps and I will see you in the next video.